Hello and welcome to part 23 my video series on how to use Blender 2.7. In this video I'll be talking about the knife tool. Let's go ahead and dive in. For the most part in this video I'll be using this default cube. So let's go ahead and press tab to go into edit mode because to use the knife tool you need to be in edit mode. Now put simply the knife tool is a way of drawing new cuts or drawing new edges on a mesh in any pattern or in any direction that you like. Up until now We've known several ways of making new edges on a mesh, and some of the ways you can do that are by pressing the W key for subdivide, and with the whole mesh selected, I basically cut every face in two directions, or I, of course I can turn that number up. You can also select just one face, and press W and subdivide to just cut that one face in two directions. You can also um, select just two edges and press W and subdivide and that'll create just one edge cutting that face in two. Or you can use the loop cut and slide tool with control R which lets you choose a direction to make a new cut and then you can click and slide it and then click to make that whole edge on your entire mesh uh, permanent. But what the knife tool lets you do is basically draw new edges by clicking and sort of a connect the dot pattern to create edges in whatever direction that you want. So how this works is to access the knife tool you press K on your keyboard, um, that's the keyboard shortcut, or you can press the knife button here over on your tool shelf, uh, again it's right there. But I'm going to go ahead and press K on my keyboard. When I do that, my mouse cursor, I'm not sure if it actually shows up uh, on my screen capture, but my cursor has changed to a little picture of a knife and when you hover over your mesh in edit mode of course you get this little green dot. When you hover over an edge of your mesh it becomes highlighted in sort of this weird green yellow color and how you use the knife tool is basically you can start off the mesh or you can start on an edge and you connect the dots by clicking and when you have two dots at least it creates a new edge. So I'm going to go ahead and click on one edge to start a new cut and you'll see that I have another green dot uh, again attached to my mouse cursor and I have this sort of purpley maroon colored line connecting those two dots. To make this a permanent cut or to actually draw a new edge I have to click again so I'm going to go ahead and click on the opposing edge and there we go. You can see it keeps going though and I could keep going but if I just want to make this edge permanent I press enter on my keyboard and now it's just a normal edge in my mesh that of course I can work with in any way. You don't have to just make one edge though across a face you can go around your whole mesh and you can make multiple cuts in the same face. I'm gonna go ahead and press K on my keyboard again to start a new cut. I'm gonna start down here this time I'm gonna make a zigzag pattern around my mesh. Once in a while I'll stop and click on an edge. I can keep going and I'll just leave it right there. Of course you have this tail end but it, the tail end does not count so I'll go ahead and press enter on my keyboard and now I have a very interesting pattern of new edges and of course I can work with my mesh as I normally would. I can extrude out different parts to make a very interesting shape. Let's go ahead and undo that. You can also start off the side of your mesh. So if I press K to get my knife tool back um, and I click over here and I go across mesh and click on the other side it goes all the way across and of course I can press enter on my keyboard and I get this cut across my mesh. Notice how the cuts are only on the sides of the mesh that you can see. Yes you can orbit once you get into a session, I'll call it a session of using the knife tool. So if I go ahead and press K on my keyboard I can start clicking, maybe I can make an interesting pattern here and of course I can orbit and keep going on this side and I'll orbit maybe go down and there we go and I'll press enter so now I've got cuts on lots of sides it's a very powerful tool there are more options with this knife tool though if you press K you'll notice that you get a bunch of instructions at the bottom of your 3d viewport now I'm not sure if YouTube is actually cutting the bottom of the screen off so what I'll do is I'll just divide this window into two so you can see the 3d header of this viewport right here. If you press K to enter a session of the knife tool, you get different instructions down here which give you more options for the knife tool. The first instruction says left mouse button LMB defines cut lines. Well, that's obvious. I'm clicking my left mouse button to define new endpoints for an edge. And the next part of this instruction set is it says you can press return or the space bar to confirm. Well, I've been pressing 
enter or return on my keyboard, but you can also press the space bar to make those edges that you just made permanent. Okay, let's go ahead and press uh, K again to go back to the knife tool. You can make multiple cuts. So if you're in the knife tool or a session of the knife tool and you make one cut, you don't have to just keep on going in the same kind of string of cuts. If you want to make a totally separate cut, you don't have to exit the knife tool and go back into it. You can just tap E on your keyboard and you now see that that trail is not sticking to my mouse anymore. I can make multiple cuts at new start points and at new end points on my mesh simply by tapping E. When you're done, of course, you can press enter and you have all of those cuts. Although I will caution you that I wouldn't do too many cuts um, and press E too many times in one session because I have found that if your cuts are too complicated uh, and you use E to make separate cuts, it uh, some edges will disappear. That was more of a bug, a bug in an older version of Blender that I found. I'm not sure if it'll still do that or if you'll still have the same problem. I actually skipped one little keyboard shortcut. If you go ahead and press K, you'll see that you can press Escape or click on the right mouse button on your mouse to exit. So if you make one cut, and you decide that you don't want to be in the uh, knife tool anymore, you can press escape on your keyboard to exit this knife tool without making that cut. Or if you get into the knife tool and you decide you don't want to be doing this anymore, you can right click as well. That'll also exit the knife tool. There are several very more powerful tools. I'm going to go ahead and undo those edits that I just made though. If you enter the knife tool, you can snap to the midpoint of any edge. Right here it says control midpoint snap. So if you hold the control key down on your keyboard, you'll notice how I'm pressing it and letting go, this midpoint snap is, is turning off and on. If you hold control down and you hover over an edge, the point where you start a new edge is going to be in the very middle of that edge. So if I click right now while holding control, it's going to only let me click when I'm on an edge in the very middle of that edge. Of course, I can click anywhere I want uh, in the middle of the face, but it'll only snap to the middle of an edge with control key down. The next option, I'll press K again to go back into the knife tool, is C angle constraint. Now what this does is if you're in the knife tool and you tap E on your keyboard, it turns on angle constraint. And what that means is when you start making cuts, dependent on the view that you're currently looking at your scene through, in other words, I'm looking at my scene through some random user perspective, it'll only let you cut in straight up and down or straight side to side or 45 degree angles. Now, of course, if I make a cut right now and click across and press enter, it's going to make a cut straight across from my own view, which is right now kind of from a top diagonal view, which means that my cut is pretty random. But if I use my orthographic front side and top views, in other words, by pressing one on my numpad and five to go to my front orthographic view, I can now use this to make cuts in basically very um, angular ways or very parallel or straight up and down on specific axes um, in my 3D viewport. So if I press K to enter the knife tool again and I click across and it's right now not constraining my angles but if I tap C it turns that on I can make a cut straight across and I know exactly now that this cut is on the X axis in my case. That is angle constraint. The final and last tool I'll talk about before I talk about how you can actually use the knife tool in a very powerful way is cut through. If I press K to enter the knife tool again, the last tool listed here is Z or Z cut through. It's turned off right now. If I tap Z on my keyboard and I click a line across or make a new cut across the mesh and I press enter, it didn't just make a cut on the sides that I can see. It actually made a cut all the way around my mesh from the current view that I was at when I made that cut. So it made a cut basically straight across from the view that I was looking at this mesh from. Again, this is a very powerful tool. If you're working with a mesh and you have n-gons that interrupt a edge loop, what I mean here is if I press K and make a cut, let's say, across the top of my mesh, so I'll press or hold um, control on my keyboard to activate midpoint snap, and I make a cut from midpoint to midpoint and then I press enter and let's go ahead and drag that up to make a little house. If I wanted to let's say make a cut across my or make a loop cut across the middle of the house it wouldn't work. If I press control R to do a loop cut 
it's not actually letting me do a loop cut all the way around the house anymore. And the reason why that is, is because loop cut and slide tool doesn't really work very well with end gons. Um, when there is an end gon, and I'm going to press escape and switch into face select mode, you'll notice that the middle of the normal four sided polygons is in the middle of the face, but the middle, the normal of the end gon is in a different location, which means that loop cut will no longer work in the way that you'd expect. So how to make a loop cut across the house? Well, if I go into my front view and I press K to enter the knife tool, I can click across, but again, that only makes a cut on that one side. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my front view, press K. I'm actually gonna enable angle constraint. So I'll press C on my keyboard. That means it'll go exactly across. But if I press C and then Z on my keyboard, and go across, it will make a cut all the way through my mesh and it's exactly parallel to the ground on the X and Y axes. So that's the basics of the knife tool. How can you use this in a practical uh, situation? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new UV sphere in my um, environment and I'm gonna turn the number of segments down to 16 and 12 and go into edit mode. Let's say that I wanted to make a character's head that was perfectly round, but I wanted to make a nose that was extruding, basically a big kind of bulbous uh, cartoon nose that was extruding from the side of the head. Well, if the nose is round, there's no real good place, except for maybe the top of the head, to extrude a nose from. I could take maybe these faces here and maybe try to pull in the corners to make it sort of round and push and pull things around. But what I might do, especially for something more complicated like a mouth that I would want to animate, is I would probably take uh, six faces and use my dissolve tool, uh, which is the X key and dissolve faces, to make that all one face and then I would draw new edges in a pattern that would give me the best circle possible. So very quickly here, I'll press K to go into the knife tool, and I'm gonna make some cuts in a circular pattern, keeping in mind how many edges I have around the circumference of this new big end gone. And you can see it's pretty easy for me to draw a more circular shape. Now, I'm not gonna press Enter here, I'll press E on my keyboard, and I'm gonna connect the edges up, so I'll tap E when I need to make new cuts. And I'll just quickly work with this. Of course, I would spend more time doing this to make sure that, or adjusting this to make sure that my edges were all kind of flowing with the rest of the mesh. I have what I want right now, so I'll press Enter on my keyboard, and I'm gonna pull this out a little bit. Again, I'm being very kind of messy and sloppy here. I might bevel this face with Control B on my keyboard, and I might pull this one out a little bit and start extruding my nose and there we go, I'm kind of doing a very bad sloppy job here. But uh, that could be a character's nose, especially if I added the subdivision surface modifier to smooth this out. So that's a basic introduction to the knife tool. That's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.